Hi everybody, welcome back to another technical demo around the Quarkus application. In this demo, I'm going to showcase the Quarkus Dev services for Kubernetes. If you have another chance to take a look at that and watch my YouTube channel, you already learned about how Quarkus Dev services works. And then uh, there are a bunch of uh, Dev services for database and a messaging broker and KCloud for security application. And then there are a lot of benefits when you use Quarkus Dev services with Quarkus Demo. But in this case, you also need to run Kubernetes for deployment application. But you don't have any Kubernetes cluster on your local machine or even remote Kubernetes cluster. How do you verify your application for deploying Kubernetes cluster? So let's take a look at how that works with the Quarkus Dev Services. Let's get started. So once again, uh, just in case you never ever heard about the Quarkus Dev Services before, Quarkus Dev Services allows developers to run a container processes uh, as long as you already have run Quarkus run, as long as you already have a container runtime such as Docker or Podman on your local machine. And then you're going to add the Quarkus extension, for example, a JDBC PostSQL like a database or a MongoDB or Oracle database or even MySQL and the Kicklog, Infinite Span, Redis. There are a bunch of the Quarkus server services around you run container automatically when you run the Quarkus demo. So we're going to use Quarkus Dev service today, but brand new Dev service like a Kubernetes. Once again, uh, you're going to verify your application functionality or feature on top of the Kubernetes as a part of the, your outer loop process. However, you don't have any Kubernetes environment on your local machine, but also remote environment. In this case, Quarkus Dev service help to you. Quarkus Dev service helps you to run uh, your application on top of the Kubernetes cluster right away. Let's jump into the demo. First of all, I'm going to create a new Quarkus project using Quarkus CLI. Uh, let's say project name Quarkus Dev Services for Kube. It automatically generates a bunch of files like a Maven wrapper and an example file as well as a Docker file or something like that. Let me go into a uh, project directory and run my ID tool to take a look at my application. And then uh, let's go to uh, Java directory and then the automatically generate separate application. You can see that and point hello for the RESTful API and the return hello from message reactive, which is very simple. And then first thing first, I'm gonna run Quarkus step mode, which allows me to have live coding. Whenever I change the code, it automatically changes my runtime. Let me try hit the uh, endpoint, hello, and it's really show that uh, hello, less easy. And then let me try to just change the return result uh, for here, Quarkus step service for Kubernetes. And now you can see that uh, Quarkus Dev Services for Kubernetes, which is real reliable coding capability. Okay, that's cool. So let me try to uh, move on to the next step. I'm going to try to containerize the application before I deploy to this application to Kubernetes. In order to test, uh, normally I need to create a Docker file to containerize the application and also push the container image in some air container registry. But also I need to create a Kubernetes manifest like a YAML file. Uh, to specify where's my container image and the service manifest and the deployment configuration, something like that. But Quarkus actually provides a bunch of the good extension to enable generate Docker images, but also a Kubernetes manifest. So let me try to that uh, using container images zip and also Kubernetes extension allows me to, uh, to do that. So when I go back to Quarkus runtime demo, it automatically restart based on new extensions. And then uh, let me try to add, uh, specify my container registry and then account name and the tag name and version, etc. If you don't specify with that in the application properties or YAML file, it's automatically create a container image based on your Palm XML, like artifact ID, global ID, things like that. But I want to use that. Uh, that's why I'm going to try to use a uh, specified container image configuration. I'm going to build a true, which means a container, container image created. And then also a registry, query.io, you, you can set up any container registry. And then uh, my account name, Daniel30, and an image name like a Quarkus-DS-K3S, because I'm going to use K3S with Quarkus Dev Services in the end. And the uh, image version name, tag name, which is the same version of Quarkus uh, version 3.4.2, okay? And then 
When I added a new Kubernetes uh, extension and Quarkus demo automatically build the application, which automatically generate Kubernetes directory under target directory with the JSON and YAML file. As you can see, the Kubernetes YAML file automatically generate, but all we contain an image variable is really came from my Tomex XML, like the version 100 snapshot. And the, uh, the image name is really the same name of my project name, Quarkus Dev Services for Q. I'm not going to use that kind of uh, default container image name. That's why I set it up a uh, container image build variable in my application properly. Let me try to build my application. You can actually keep running Quarkus Dev mode at the same time. So Quarkus build is automatically uh, build fast jar, but also container image based on JetJar file. And then when I uh, just find my new generate container image, and then now you can see uh, IO Daniel O3, and the Quarkus DS K3S with a version, uh, tag name, 342. Awesome. So let me push that container image into my Quay.io, which allows me access that container image publicly from my Kubernetes cluster. And then uh, when you go back to just double check uh, the target directory and the Kubernetes able, and now you can see the new image name and tag really same name from my application property. And then uh, I'm just need to uh, apply this Kubernetes manifesto by targeting Kubernetes cluster. However, I don't have any Kubernetes cluster at this moment. I don't, I don't want to uh, deploy this application to maybe Red Hat Developer Sandbox. I just a really quick check on my local machine. I uh, will run somewhere out there Kubernetes cluster. So this really, I wanted to showcase to how to use Quarkus Dev services for Kubernetes. So let me try to add the Kubernetes client extension, which allow me to stand up Kubernetes cluster by default as a part of the Quarkus Dev service. In order to test, let me try to add a few configuration here. Uh, Kubernetes client dev services override QCONF. Because I already have a QCONF file on my local uh, file system because I already some history login uh, Red Hat developer sandbox or the, my own OpenShift cluster somewhere uh, cloud like uh, Amazon, Google, Microsoft. So in order to point to my uh, containerized Kubernetes cluster with the Quark staff services, uh, and I need to set up overriding my QConfig. So very simple. And then I also needed to which Kubernetes cluster I'm going to use for dev services. By default configuration, uh, API only server, or you can set up kind or K3, K3Fs. It's a small package of the Kubernetes cluster. Let me try to use K3Fs at this moment. That's it. And then I'm going to just restart my Quarkus dev service, a uh, Quarkus demo. And then uh, just Double check, uh, uh, is there something running process at this moment? And I don't have any running Docker process. And I'm going to just rerun my Quarks demo. And then you can see really uh, automatically download new container image. And then you can see that uh, you know, back to the terminal and then take a look at that uh, running container processes. And then now you can see that uh, K33 based on uh, Kubernetes raised version and the test container. This is one of the beauty of the Quarkus Dev services. You have a zero configuration to run test containers on top of the Quarkus application when you run Quarkus demo. It means you have to set it up always to test container configuration on your Java project, for example, Mabel, Gradle, and also you need to set up a mandatory uh, variable on your application properties. For example, like a JDBC URL for the Kubernetes extension, you also need to where is my API server URL and then like some certification data, etc. However, Quarkus Dev Service is automatically set up for you as developer. So you don't need to set up any kind of configuration to run Kubernetes cluster with your test containers, which is out of say zero configuration. Okay, and then when you open Quarkus Dev UI and then navigate it to Dev Services menu, now you can see that uh, why I set a zero configuration. So all configuration already set up inside Quarkus runtime, but it's really, really hide on your application property file. 
However, if you want to uh, some of the uh, real override there's some key and variable, you just copy and paste and then set up whatever you want. And then now I have some of the uh, my API URL and the certificate. In order to access my K33 Kubernetes for my local machine, I need to just uh, expose my K33S, K3S Kubernetes information. So today I need to create a K3S email file. And then here to my, I just copy from my cheat sheet. And then I need to uh, update to some of the variable here, for example, so my API server port is uh, 62370. And also uh, the client uh, certificate, uh, certificate uh, variable. I just uh, updated this one. And then uh, another thing is client certificate data, which is I need to copy from here, dev service variable. Just copy and paste it here. And one last thing is uh, certificate uh, key data as well. So whenever you're going to restart Quarkus application in dev mode, this all certificates automatically are regenerated. So save a file and then just make sure where the K3SML file exists. And then I just needed to expose the qconfig uh, environment variable with the K3YAML, which allows me to connect to a uh, local K3S cluster. That's it. And let me try to uh, cuddle. And uh, I have a one node here based on containerized uh, Kubernetes cluster. And then my default namespace is default. And then I don't have any resources already deployed in the, the default namespace except for the default Kubernetes service here. Okay, let me try to apply this Kubernetes email file which is generated under the target directory using kubectl. And then target Kubernetes, Kubernetes YAML, it automatically generated a bunch of stuff. Now you can see that a pod is created, and the service is created, and deployment and replica as well. Let me try to load uh, to a running container pod, and then it really shows uh, running Quarkus. And then you can see that uh, Quarkus raised project I just created to, to generate this project report two, and then uh, install the feature as well. You can also access the other application pod in the same namespace, or even the other namespace using service IP here, or service domain as well. If you export this uh, service as a load balancer, you can really access this pod from external client, for example, my local machine. That's it. And then uh, you can actually, uh, um, uh, whenever you run Quark Step mode in the desk container, uh, still running all the time. If you stop Quark Step mode, for example, I just stop it, and then back to that terminal and then check it out, the running container processes and then the K3S container already gone and the test container will be terminated soon enough. Now all test containers are terminated automatically when you start Quarkus demo, which is really awesome for developers. You don't need to care about starting test container configuration as well as stop it. It really saves your time and then save your resources on your local machine. That's it. Thanks for watching and make sure to subscribe my YouTube channel for the upcoming interesting and insightful technical demo and tutorials. Thanks again.